Carlton mm-hmm. versus Geelong. Two versus six, Friday night at the MCG. Um, it's one of two, well, in my opinion, it's one of two of the biggest round, uh, games of the round. Carlton has a better midfield, I'd say, than Geelong, right? What other, At this um, present time, yes. Yeah. Uh, what other advantages or uh, disadvantages do you see going into this game? I just think Carlton's playing a lot better than Geelong. Look, Geelong have lost four in a row, maybe even five in a row, which is, they had a seven and no start, and to lose five in a row, it says a lot. And Carlton's just going about their business, you know, not seeing the world a lot, but they're winning games. And they're winning them easier than they were last year, so they've, you know, Elevated. Going up a level, with, yeah, absolutely. That's the word I was looking for. Elevated. Okay. They've so, elevated from last year, and you know, it's it's good. I think Carlton are doing really well. So, to ask you our favorite, her favorite question here: Who loses and why? Based you on sort what of I just, just said, <laughs> you I, sort I of did. Just but it. but he, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. I kind of think that because Geelong have lost five in a row, they really, really, really need to win one. Yeah. Because or else they slip out of the eight. I so, still think Geelong lose. Just because Carlton's just going a lot better. Okay. I, I'm i in agreement. I think Geelong lose this game. I feel like Hawkins and Cameron are have been a little inconsistent mm. lately. Don't know who you're going to get there. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a close game, though. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think it, it should be fun. See if your mm. boys can pull it off this week. So, They're all better. right. They better. Both of us, Geelong, are losing, ladies and gentlemen. So here's a question for you. Do you think Chris Scott will be at the Cats next year? I can only <laughs> answer that if Brisbane don't have a coach. Ooh. What about Port Adelaide? Do they have a coach? <laughs> they don't have a coach, but it won't be Brad Scott or Chris what Scott. What about the Crows? Do they have a do They, they have, have a, a coach. coach. Yeah, they have a coach next year. But Port Adelaide won't. But, Throw um, Adam Simpson back in there. Do the Eagles no, have a coach? No, no one wants to coach the Eagles. God. <laughs> I mean, at this point, maybe Freo don't have a coach. I don't know. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Um, all right. So we'll, 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 we'll circle back to that in a, okay. a couple of weeks. All right. So the next game, Port Adelaide versus Brisbane, 7th versus 13th. It's a Saturday afternoon at the Adelaide Oval. Um I know you watched the Port GWS game. Was, Terrific game, wasn't it? It was it was Not. much like your beloved St Kilda. St Kilda. <laughs> I know. I thought they Yeah, I know it was <laughs> right? bizarre. Yeah, St Kilda scored a lot of points and neither of these teams could kick straight and score oh, any it was, goals. It was, it was um, an ugly game, wasn't it? It was. Home ground advantage for Port Adelaide. Port's midfields midfielders could probably beat Brisbane's. Port's coming off a you know, a terrible loss to the Giants. So who loses and why? Port Adelaide lose. At home. Brisbane. Yep. Yep. I don't care where it is. You can play it on the moon. Brisbane's wow. forward line will just... Charlie Cameron, he's... Yeah. I don't know where he's been, but this yeah. week he's, uh, he, he's, he's due this week. He's but due this week. Okay. Brisbane's, Brisbane's style, you know, that free-flowing scoring approach wins for me and Port Adelaide just can't kick a score they can't manage to score anymore I don't know what's happened to them well I'm going with Brisbane to lose I think the home ground advantage and the loss to GWS is gonna light a fire but um but with that said if like Danaher and Hipwood show up because sometimes they don't yeah it could true. give them it could give them a bit of a problem I don't know. We might be in for a lot of close games this weekend. That's my my so. sense. I feel like that that there's going to be some excitement going on uh, in this next round. Great. So I say Brisbane lose. You say Port Adelaide lose. Uh, Giants versus S- Sydney is the third game of the round. Fifth versus first. Um, it's a Saturday night at Giant Stadium in. Ingi, Ingi, Engi, Engi. Engi, Engi. <laughs> I never get it right. I always it's like it's energy, L. but we can't spell over here in Australia. So I it's always, th- I always like when I see it. I always see it like an. L. It actually looks Engie, like eagle, yeah. eagle to me now because no, I'm an Eagles it does. fan. Of course it does. <laughs> okay, Port played the Giants. The Giants had you know a little trouble getting started, but it seemed like things started firing again. In my opinion, Kelly coming back was key, and so and Buckley 
returning to the team. Mm. Uh, maybe a little rusty just because they'd been out for a bit. But um, Amadi's definitely not kicking nine goals against the Giants next week. I'll tell you that. That's Absolutely not happening. Absolutely not. He's kicking ten. <laughs> ten? Oh, my God. You're, you're dreaming. Oh, I know. Um, oh, I know. So what did you think of the Giants' performance against Port? Lackluster. Lackluster. Mm. Hence mm. why I tipped Brisbane to beat Port because they were even more lackluster if you can beat. <laughs> it was just, yeah. Okay, it was the lesser of two lacklusters. Is that exactly. what you're saying? And what do you think of my mate Toby Green? He must Be have careful. a lot of sleepless Tread nights with that Tread lightly, kid. buddy. He's really struggling. <laughs> struggling. I don't think struggling is the right word. Uh, I, think, I do. I think that, yes, it is not his year. And coming off of last year, certainly it doesn't look as great. If he didn't have such a fantastic year last year, I think we wouldn't be like so harsh on him. However, um, he did score a goal because I know you guys weren't certain about that in your show. He did score you know, a goal. Yes, um, because we didn't watch the last five minutes, so we, we, <laughs> <laughs> we missed that. So And he was very handy in other areas. He, you know, he caused them problems. So, as always, he's always doing stuff. Hmm. Tom Green stepped up this week. Again, Kelly was – Kelly is, is crucial. He's Kelly, um, yeah. So – with that said, Sydney's coming off of, you know, demolishing uh, most people. <laughs> but they haven't lost yet, right? Since the – was it one of the they first games, Richmond. right? Yeah. Second this, round or third round or something. Right. They lost so to it's, they've, they've, been on a, they've been on a tear for uh, yeah. the last several months. So Sydney played Adelaide this past week. And mm -hmm. for the first half of the game, it looked like the Crows may actually cause an upset here. Was it that – they found a chink in the armor of the swans or were they just playing with their food? Just playing with their food. It's, it's actually funny watching Sydney. You, you, can be, you need to be 10 goals up to, to beat Sydney these days. Yeah, 10 even, goals Even the up. best sides, even Carlton were five goals up and lost by nine goals. Yeah, so, that's true. Uh, they, they do they, have they just, a way of just, coming back. They just toy with opposition. They yeah. really do. It's do like they, they have a look and just yeah. say, okay, is that all you got? Let's go. All right, so who loses and why? GWS. They get a smashing this week. A smashing? Really? A, a smashing. smashing. All right, yep. well, I They've clearly been treading am water disagreeing. for four weeks, GWS, so. Nah, nah. So okay. I'm going to tell you why Sydney are going to lose. One. Okay, I'm going to sit back and oh, I need to hear this. <laughs> One. The old do a loss. They're do a loss. They haven't lost. It's time for them to lose. So that's it. That's your no, well, that's your rationale. That, that, They're due well, to lose. Gotcha. Okay, and historically, out of the last 10 games they've played, they're even. They're five for five. Mm -hmm. um, his, the entire history, Sydney's up 16-10, so they do have a bit of an, an advantage. Mm. It is a home game for the Giants. And it's do or die for the Giants. And they did lose the last game in the, earlier in the round to Sydney. And it usually bounces back and forth. So I don't know. I think Sydney's going to come in super cocky and think they've got it. And I think the Giants are going to show us why, you know, they were premiership favorites for a while. I think, uh, look, this time last year is when they started their run to the finals, right? So they're mm -hmm. way ahead on that. That's true. So I'm going to say Sydney lose with a caveat that caveat? even if I think the Giants were going to lose, I'm still saying that Sydney's going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I wouldn't expect I anything I else. I love the Giants. I'm sorry. The orange team. The good old orange team. So moving right along. Um, Melbourne versus North Melbourne. And... Uh, this is 11th versus 18th. They were, oh, they were so close to being 17th, weren't they? Oh, no. um, Sunday night, MCG. So let's let's talk about North Melbourne for a minute. Well, well, here's the thing. Four weeks ago, everyone, everyone on the planet said North will not win a game this year, right? Right, it's true. And I said, of course they will. I've been saying it all year. It just, yeah, it, like it's logical that it happens right as bad yeah. as they are you know teams have injuries whatever whatever it is form slumps right the chances of them not winning a game in 23 is you know point oh. zero one percent right so they win last week they yeah. get within the point of collingwood yeah and yet north supporters are still disappointed i, I know. don't get it i, I don't know. get it and 
And look, I mean, they were what fifty four points. Is that what it was? The, yeah, the 54, fifty four, fifty two, right? Fifty odd points. However, there were like a doozy of of umpiring calls that did not go their way. There was That's that true. atrocious fifty meter towards the end of the game that should have that been was, called that wasn't. Absolutely. Yep. There was um, Dacos was holding the ball holding the and ball. that didn't yep. get called right in front of goal. Um, mm-hmm. Quainar throws the ball right in front of goal. That was another one. It was and they insane. still had two chances to win North. They had two shots of goal in the last minute. Two yeah, snaps it was and insane. they both missed. Yeah, it, it was, was insane. And I also, you know, I also have seen comments, you know, basically, you know, why, why did they take the tag off of Dacos? It was working. If you look at the mm. stats from the beginning of, of the game to when they, I can't remember the player's name, when they pulled him out. Will Phillips. Yes. Like, wh- why? He wasn't injured, was he? I mean, it didn't look like he was injured. It, it sounded like they did no. it as like a tactical sub. Well. Well, the word here this morning is that he was tired. Is that he, he just couldn't go? I mean, Dacos is pretty <laughs> fit and you know, runs yeah. ragged, right? Yeah. Um, he hasn't played for a few weeks. He's been playing seconds football in the VFL, so okay. Yeah, you know, it's it's a couple of levels up when you go to AFL. So I guess he put his hand up and said, "Look, I can't give you any more." Oh. Which, all right, is, uh, p- potentially that's what he said. Yeah. Now, if he did, that's a bit. Poor by the player. You've got to be ready to play AFL or else to stay yeah. play, right? And Dacos single handedly won the game that last quarter for for Collins. Oh, it's so, amazing! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. It was kind of funny the beginning of the game because the commentators couldn't like. They started the first, I think, play of the game. They it was like it went from one day cost to the other day cost. And then they were like, like already like hailing the day cost brothers, yeah. like within the first like seconds of the game. And then, the and then it was like silence. <laughs> yeah. Silence. I was like, Oh, this is a bad day to be a commentator but in Melbourne. I've oh. got to say the commentating on that game, because like you said earlier, everyone loves an underdog and yeah. I feel like they were all willing North Melbourne over the line. And it was, it was actually so much fun listening to them. So do you think a devastating loss like this, is going to derail the rest of their season? Absolutely not. Absolutely. I think it propels them, personally. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, they're professionals. They'll sit down today as a group and, and say, this is a level we need to play at. And right. if we play at this level, we can win Yeah. enough games to be competitive, you know? Yeah, I mean, they had them um, on the ropes. They, I mean... 100%. All right, so let's see. We've talked a lot about North Melbourne. We have said nothing mm-hmm. about Melbourne. Uh, Petraka, poor baby, is out for the season. He was yeah. really injured, and it's funny because I, I think we might have been texting. I said he doesn't look right last week when this the injury happened. Mm. It was just he shouldn't have been on the field. So he's out. Agreed. I think Lever's still out. It's not been a good run for them. So with that, yeah, their forward line is is not there. Um, who loses and why? Melbourne lose. Melbourne they, lose. They just cannot score. They yeah. cannot score. And I'm riding the North Melbourne wave. Yeah. I'm riding it until it. Hey, I got news for you. I agree with you. <laughs> I think <laughs> I'm going to give it to the kids, man. I mean, if they can play like they played this week against the Demons next week, they can win it. Cause, because well, the Demons aren't going to come back the way Collingwood did. No, absolutely. No. And a, a couple of people have said that. The young kids are like are like goldfish. They just forget what happened and they just move on. Yeah. They've got short memories, right, where the older players just like, they, you know, they let it sort That's, of bother them. That isn't that from yeah. Ted Lasso? Probably. I yes. think it's the Ted Lasso. Goldfish, goldfish. yes, Ted Lasso. Goldfish. Yeah. So I need to grow a moustache, do I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's true, though. It's yeah, great. Yeah, So it makes sense. Like, I, yeah. I, 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 you know, kids bring enthusiasm and they just want to keep playing and you know, yeah, we're all they kids got, once, and, and you got just want to keep playing. Fire in their belly right now, like hundred percent, hundred percent. Like they can and see I, that they can do it. They're not like they're not getting killed like they were, you exactly. know, earlier and, in the and, season, right? And I feel I feel like the kids at North Melbourne, Sheasel, Wardlaw, mm-hmm. LDU is not oh, so much Wardlaw, a kid, but he's still great, yeah. fantastic, isn't he? I feel yeah. like they've taken control of the club. Yeah, and they they've pretty much without saying, but they they've said this is our club. We're going in this direction. Yeah. Yeah. And all you older guys that were here and, and want to, you know, wallow in the depths of, you know, losing games every, you know, every right. year can go away. So I yeah. think it's a new era for North, you know, combing down back, 
Larky's doing well up forward. I, I, yeah. I love it. Oregon's yeah, it's so a, good. It's, it's exciting. Do you think Sheasel's as good as Nick Dacos? Good question. Uh, like, let's let's just put it this way. If Sheasel was playing on another team, or Cheezel, mm. as we like to call Cheezel, him now, right? Yep, Cheezel. Yep. If he was playing on, let's say, Collingwood, or let's say the, the Sydney Swans, or any other yeah. team, would people be gushing over him the way they're, you know, is he as good as Nick Dacos? I, I think he's potentially as good. I just think yeah. what you just said about if he was playing on a better team. Right. Um, because I feel like... All those young kids just have to do so much at North Melbourne because, you know, they just don't have a great team at the moment. They're doing yeah. quite well, but it's the young ones and they're just doing so much where Dacos gets a luxury of doing what he wants when he wants sort of thing because they've got yeah. that, you know, those older heads that just, they open it up for him. So potentially he's just as good, just not right now. So here's a funny thing I just thought of. So. Dacos, they didn't want him to play this week, right? Yeah, he asked well, to play. He was. They were going to manage him, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Imagine he, um, what happened if they had managed him. Like, well, we were talking. <laughs> yeah, we were talking on Thursday with the boys, and we said if Dacos doesn't play, I, I would try to sell it to him. North win. They're like, oh, you're kidding yourself. And he played, and they almost nearly won. So, yeah, um, I, I think Dacos, he's that professional. He's that smart. He understands yeah. that. Hey, North, you know, this isn't a – if I can play, I'm playing. Right. Wow. Which, All so right. you should, you know. So I agree with you. I think the Demons lose. No Petraka, no Lever, no Melbourne. And the fire in the belly of the boys in North Melbourne, the Roos are going to win this game. I love the way so you there think. you have it. Can I, can I tell you a quick story about Christian Petraka? I'd love to hear about him. I heard him on the radio <laughs> an hour ago, okay? Oh, Okay. He had his surgery a couple of days ago. He's still in hospital, right? He's still in hospital. He's actually in quarantine because he can't have any visitors because he's oh, spleen. Wow. He's had oh. to have all his um, immunization shots and everything because his immune system's gone because of okay. the spleen. Yeah. So basically he said, this is coming from the horse's mouth, straight from the horse's mouth. Okay. He was awake during surgery. He was? Because they couldn't give him anesthetic because of his spleen. Yeah. Uh, so he said they gave him the face mask. He said, yeah. but that only gets you so far. And he said it was a little bit painful and I was awake and I could hear what was going on. Oh, that's, oh yeah, that's, my that's God. ugly, he, isn't it? He's, yeah, he's a champion, man. So moving on to Essendon versus Eagles, 4th versus 16th. See, 16th. They're still not at the bottom. Everybody would thought they were going to be. Not yet. Sorry, Charlie. Not yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. This is a Sunday afternoon game at Marvel Stadium. Uh, both teams are coming off a bye. They're rested. It's a home game for the Bombers. Um, it's also the second matchup for these two teams of the season. They've already played. Um, and Eagles only lost to Essendon by a goal. And this was early. Was it early in the season? I think yeah, so. Yeah, it was about yeah. round four, round five or something. Yeah. So a lot of people are talking about the um, the great fall of the Bombers and that it's coming. They've been waiting for it. Okay. Uh, I know you're not, but a lot there's a lot of talk about that. And um, I don't know. Maybe they get a reprieve in their great fall uh, this week. Let's see, Draper and Dersma, I think they're still out. I'm not sure. Does that sound right to you? Draper might miss the whole season. His knee's playing up oh, a bit. Oh, it's that bad? I thought it yeah. was only like a couple of week kind of situation. Well, it was, and then they reassessed, and they said it okay. could be out the whole season. So Okay. Harley is still out, I believe, for the Eagles. I guess, yeah, I guess the bye doesn't count as a week off. <laughs> no, it doesn't, unfortunately. <laughs> Darn. So now that Essendon have Goldstein, do they still need Draper? Not at the moment because he's, no? he's handling his business in the yeah. run, Todd Goldstein, but they'd love to have Draper uh, yeah. instead of Goldstein, but, you know, he serves his purpose at the moment, so. All right, let's just get to the question. I know you're dying to answer it. <laughs> Who loses and why? Oh, come <laughs> on. Are you serious? Without Harley uh, Reid? Yeah. You know my thoughts on that. <laughs> Sorry, West Coast are you... will get a belting. A belting. Okay, An what? Abs- Sixty points plus. What? 
it. Yeah, this could be an embarrassing loss. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, embarrassing. Andy. So, listen, I have news for you. I think you got news for the world if I... Uh, if you're yeah. going to say what I think you're going to say. Yeah, well, I'm just mixing it up here. So, um, I think the Eagles lose. I do. I'm sorry. I, I, I look, I don't, I don't think. I thought you were going to say something else then. I know. I know you did. Um, I don't think that it, the, the rule, you know, no Harley, no Eagles. I don't agree with that, but I do agree with this. Um, I mean, they still have like Tim Kelly's out. Um, I don't. I'm not sure if Oscar Allen's coming back in, but even if he did, I would think he's going to be a little rusty after not playing Absolutely. for so long, right? But I think what Harley brings to the table is he just brings the optimism and he, you know, and the belief, you know. So without him there, I it, I don't think it's that the other guys aren't good without him, but I think that what he, you know, the excitement that he brings gives them a little bit more of a psychological you know, edge, a mental, a mental edge, if you will. I so, agree. um, so yeah, so I think my little Eagles are, are going to be sad, <laughs> sad. Is there a word for baby? Is there actually a name for a baby Eagle? <laughs> a Eagle? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So here's a, here's a question for you. So if Harley Reed was fit and firing every week for the rest of the season, how many places do you think the Eagles could jump on the ladder? They've got three <laughs> wins. They're sixteenth. Yeah. Uh, maybe one, but that doesn't one? mean. One. Yeah, but it doesn't mean they're not going to win more games. Like I think, I think they're on twelve, and the next team's on twenty. So that's two games right there, mm, right? So maybe um, I, I think they could win another two or three games. That's pretty All good. Right. Six games, twenty-four points. Okay, so moving right along. Dockers versus Suns. Eight versus 10th. Sunday evening, it's at Optus. It's in beautiful Western Australia, Perth. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I know that you had a personal interest in the Dockers loss this week. Do you want to I remind did. everybody why that is? Well, for everyone that doesn't know and hasn't watched our show, <laughs> uh, I said if the Dockers, well, the Dockers won't play finals this year. And if they do, I'll eat 100 nuggets on a live stream in 30 minutes. <laughs> All right. So. so that's how confident I was that yeah. they're not playing finals. I also said about St. Kilda, but that's a moot point. That's done. Yeah, busted. okay. So that, that yeah, because it was almost the 200. It was almost the 200. Uh, yeah, that was never going to happen, Cindy. Yeah. I told you that. <laughs> you didn't want to hear it, but I told you it was never going to happen, 200. All right, so. I, I read I read a I seem like a very astonishing fact that Frio that eleven of their players failed to lay a tackle in the first half. That seems like astonishing to me. It, That's it does, yeah. Um and then I saw this quote that I thought was so great. It said the insipid effort and lack of intensity <laughs> And I thought, yeah, that's about right. It seems like that's the Frio that's, Dockers. That summed up this game. I mean, nobody, nobody, nobody saw this coming. I mean, maybe people thought they were going to lose, but not like that. So um, it is a home game, obviously, for the Dockers. Um, the Suns, as we all know, don't perform well uh, away game on away games. Boarding pass. Um, as soon as I get the boarding pass, it's over. So who loses and why? Really. As much yeah. as I despise Fremantle, yeah, Gold Coast lose Gold Coast so lose. comfortably. It's not funny. Yeah, we said on our show last night that they should make a weekend of this Gold Coast and go and see the sights of Perth. <laughs> go down to Margaret River, have some wine, the wineries. Relax. You know, just enjoy it. Go to Cottesloe Beach, and just enjoy yeah. Perth. It's really nice over there. Yeah, don't play football. Don't show up. Don't show up with up to stadium. So it's a waste sad. of time. It's just a waste. I feel waste. like now they're gonna like they're gonna watch this clearly, and then they're gonna like be like, "We'll show you, Andrew." And you well, know, maybe if it'll you change. watch this, Damien Hardwick, <laughs> I will send you an invoice for it. You're welcome. <laughs> so I would have to agree with you. I think Frio have to win this game. I just don't see how they can. I don't see how they can lose this game. Um, they uh, still have a shot at finals. Yeah. Yeah? Well, I think they want me to eat the Nuggets, so they're really pushing hard to win this one, Freo. <laughs> it's getting personal. <laughs> it is. It is. So, Andy, 
You know, you know, I love me some Fife, right? Sexy beast, but has the game passed him by? Absolutely. Yeah. Two years ago. Two years two ago. Years, two really? years ago. Yep. Yep. He's been a hack for three years. He's always mm. injured. He just doesn't like. If you watch the game on the weekend, every time he got the ball, he just hacks it forward. He doesn't know what to do. He's he panics. It's, it's just yeah. It's not for him. Uh, yeah. Like, if he's a Frio great and ex captain, he loves the club so much. At the end of the year, he's just going to say, "I've had enough." He's still got another year to run on his contract. That's that's yeah. that's astonishing, if you ask me. Yeah. With that said, it makes me think about Dusty Martin. It was a very exciting weekend for him. It was actually it was, quite touching. Um, it was. You know, to see at the end, even though they they lost. I mean, they mm. started off. I mean, what a great start that, for Richmond. He kicks that, that goal. Amazing. Everybody that goes bananas. Amazing. It was awesome, right? It's pretty for. emotional. Yeah, I mean, emotional in a very like non-emotional. Yeah, way. well, that, that's that's him. He <laughs> right? was trying not to be emotional. Yeah, but it sort it was, of got it a hold of him a little sweet. bit. Yeah. But does he? Is he done? Is this it for him? Is he done at the end of the uh-uh. season, or do we get to see him play again? He's playing. He's playing. Yeah, play on. Yeah, for, yeah, for, you yeah. think for the Suns, or you think he's going to stay no, at no, Richmond? He's, he's staying at Richmond. He, lo- at he Richmond. loves that place too much. Yeah, he's. Yeah. He, he's a. Ve- I think he's a very loyal person. Yeah. Okay, I don't think money really motivates him. Yeah. Because if that was the case, he would have gone to North Melbourne four years ago or five years ago. You know, like he's given that club so much, and I think he just wants to. He just feels obliged to sort of stay there and help the yeah. rebuild, if you like. You know. Yeah, that sounds you're good. a long time retired. Let's be honest. Like he'll leave the <laughs> club. He, if he left Richmond and went up to the Suns, he he'd be thinking, "Jeez, what's going on down at Punt Road?" You know, I wish I yeah. was there. And yeah, he's got a lot of friends there. He grew so up he's still place, in yeah. your eyes. He's still relevant, but Nat Absolutely. Fife is out. Oh yeah, I don't see Nat Fife kicking goals like Dusty kicked on the weekend. That's true. I mean, true story. You, you'll yeah. never see that again. I don't think he's ever been a particularly good kick. No, no, Nat he's Fife, a horrendous right? kick. All right. So anyway, you heard it here. We have AFL from LA's tips for round 15 and Andrew from Ankle Sore. You can check him out. Please tell everyone where they can find you. YouTube on Ankle Sore Podcast and on Instagram, Ankle Sore Podcast. Fantastic. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.